Welcome to After the Whistle with Jamie Say and Ryan Welch. From the outside looking in, every coach in America has great respect for this program. And I think that people feel that uh, something special is about to happen here. I know I feel it. How badly did you want to beat UCF in the Peach Bowl? <laughs> and this program kind of has a chip on their shoulder. I've got a chip on my shoulder. And your message to UCF fans is what? Buckle up. Buckle up and hop on the Gus bus. Tonight, get to know the driver a little bit better. A conversation with UCF head coach Gus Malzahn. Hello and welcome to a special edition of After the Whistle Live on News 6. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Jamie Say. And I'm Ryan Welch. Coming up over the next 25 minutes, the newest UCF night, Gus Malzahn, the ninth head coach in UCF football history. As he gets ready to lead the Knights into spring ball, he met us on campus. Yeah, he did. The Malzahn hire made waves throughout college football. He comes to UCF after eight years leading Auburn and with decades of coaching high school football. A football CEO, Malzahn was hired on February 15th, and this enthusiasm has not gone away. I've been coaching 30 years, and I truly believe this is one of the most excited moments I've had in my whole career. At that introductory press conference, he announced lofty goals for the Knights, conference titles, big-time bowl games, and the college football playoffs. And he went to work on those goals immediately, hiring his staff in about two <laughs> weeks. Since then, Malzahn and his coaches have been recruiting, 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 and on Monday, the Knights kick off spring practice. So he's been busy, but the new head coach gave us time to get to know him recently. I sat down with him for an extended conversation. Coaches, your wife, Christy, is enthusiastic about joining the UCF family as you are. Oh, there's no doubt. Uh, you know, we had the press conference right after. She got to know everybody. Uh, matter of fact, when I was meeting with every player, she was sitting right outside. She got a chance to meet everyone. Uh, she bought a house within four days, and uh, now she's back in Auburn getting our stuff to, together and getting ready to move, so she's really excited. Seems like you've had your foot to the floor since you've been here. What have the last few weeks been like? Yeah, it, it's been crazy fast. Uh, I think I took the job at 9 o'clock on a Sunday night, got here, we had a press conference at 12, uh, and hit the ground running, you know, just trying to get to know our players. Uh, hire a staff, which hiring a staff in two weeks is a challenge this late, but we got a great staff. And then really just uh, you know trying to get recruiting. And, and you've heard me say, we're gonna recruit the state of Florida, Florida like no one uh, ever has. And so we're just trying to get that going. I don't know if you've noticed because you've been so busy, but it seems like there's already so much momentum around this program. Do you perceive that and how does that make you feel? Yeah, I hope so. You know, I think that people feel that uh, something special is about to happen here. I know I feel it. And uh, you know, recruits feel the same way and, and just us really, and it starts in Orlando. You know, we're, we're talking about the state of Orlando. That's what we're doing. Every coach will have a, you know, eight to 10 schools and that's where we're gonna start. And then obviously we're gonna recruit this state. And we feel like if we can keep the, the guys home, okay, that I've actually recruited in the past from this area and know a lot about, if we can keep them home, then we can get this thing going you know, really quick. How do you feel like you've connected with the current players on the team? Well, uh, as best we could, you know, and, and we've had numerous team meetings and like I said, individual meetings and, you know, relationships, it's a process and trust is a process, but, you know, they're all bright eyed. You can tell they're excited. Um, I'm really curious about getting out on the field with them in spring practice and, and getting to know each other. So uh, it, it, it's, it's really exciting. What do you hope they get to know about you? Well, I think just the expectation, the standard, uh, just making sure that, um, you know, if we're truly gonna do these special things that we're talking about, it's gonna take a lot of work, it's gonna take a lot of, lot of discipline, and it's gonna take us all together. And so really this first spring, is just gonna be that trust factor, everyone coming together, players and coaches for the same, purpose and uh, and getting ready for next fall. How important is it to get the team leaders on board with what you're doing, especially early? Yeah, I think it's very important. And I can already tell we got some strong leaders and we got some really good football players. And so them just uh, buying in, which, which they have. Um, and, and like I said, they feel it too. I mean, the players feel like, hey, something's fixing to happen. It's a little bit different. And you know, the great thing for me is the foundation's been laid. They played really good football. You know, we're a top 25 program right now, and you know we're ready to, to raise that that bar even more. And they feel it, and so, uh, but it'll be a matter of time. What are your goals and expectations for spring ball? Well, it, it, it's really to evaluate. Uh, we're going to put in the foundation, offense, defense, and special teams, but it's evaluating each position. And I'm really curious to see what we have. 
uh, we will build around our strengths and try to identify our weaknesses and uh, either recruit to them, uh, you know, or, or just keep developing and growing guys. In your introductory press conference, you talked about balance, balance on offense, but also balance overall. You know, what is your philosophy when it comes to things happening on the football field? Yeah, I mean, of course, we're going to continue to play fast, and, and you know, we want to be a top 10 offense like they've been the last few years, but I want to be a top 10 defense. And if we're truly going to be that team that, you know, plays against the big boys and able to beat them and take that next step as a program, we're going to have to play great defense. And Travis Williams, our defensive coordinator, he's one of the rising stars, and he's going to do a great job on the field. He's one of the best recruiters, really, in all of college football. And so, uh, you know, I know our defense, you, you can just, you can tell they're excited to get out on the field. And, like I said, we're just we're excited to see what we have. You mentioned Travis Williams in his first meeting with us in the media. He said it was a no-brainer to join you, and then in the media availabilities since then, all of your assistants seem to say it's a no-brainer to come here. It was a no-brainer to come to UCF. Is that like a company line or what? No, not not really. Um, you know, it. I've not said that, and, and but it's just from the outside looking in. Every coach in America has great respect for this program. And I think a lot were like me, like if the right guy ever got there and would stay there and build it, I mean, it could really be something special. So I think that is the reason a lot of our coaches are saying that. And that's the reason I'm here. You know, I was thinking about sitting out a year, maybe doing some TV and taking a job next year. But when this job came open, and, and I'll say this too, it's about fit. And this program kind of has a chip on their shoulder. I've got a chip on my shoulder, you know, a former high school coach and the way I've came up. And so I think it's a really good marriage. And, uh, you know, I'm 55 now, uh, been at a big program. We won a national championship, kind of been there and done that. But I'm really excited about doing it here. And I really think we can. It'll take a lot of work, uh, but uh, and it'll take a lot of recruiting. But right now we're trying to find those guys that want to be a part of something special. And I think that's why you're hearing those coaches say that. It's an exciting spring at UCF. That's just scratching the surface, though, of the Gus Malzahn interview. Yeah, it's hard to picture Malzahn not coaching, isn't it? He just looks like a football coach. He's got the emotion. He's got the energy for, for sure. And the one thing that Night Nation can take away from that, he wants balance. He needs a big defense. They need a lot of improvement on that side Absolutely. of the ball. Absolutely. After the whistle has to take a timeout. But coming up, more with Malzahn. And I just want to be an example. I want our coaches to be a positive example for our players. You know, what a great dad looks like, what a great husband looks like, and this is a lot bigger than football for me. The coach shares more of his vision for the UCF program and looks back on the day he stood opposite, on the opposite sideline rather, when After the Whistle returns. Welcome back to After the Whistle, live on News 6. Jamie and Ryan with you. We're talking UCF football with the Knights' new head coach, Gus Malzahn. We're going to get to the rest of his interview in like one second. But first, Ryan, it's funny how fate works, isn't it? It is, definitely in this case. In the 2017 Peach Bowl, Malzahn and Knight Nation were on the opposite sidelines. The win over Malzahn and Auburn propelled UCF into the national conversation. Now the coach wants to take the program to greater heights. You know, this is a, a job that I'm planning on being here and building it. This, to me, is one of the top 20 coaching jobs in all of college football. After eight seasons at Auburn, one of college football's traditional powers, Gus Malzahn calls UCF the future. Motivated by his past, he arrived in Orlando as energized as this football program that he's taken over. Here's the rest of my conversation with Gus Malzahn. How badly did you want to beat UCF in the Peach Bowl? <laughs> well, anytime you go to a New Year's Six game, you want to win the game. And, uh, you know, that, that year, you know, we, uh, we beat Alabama by two touchdowns. And the first time we played Georgia, we beat them by four. And so then we played an SEC championship game. Our, 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 our running back got hurt. But, you know, I knew they were really good on film. And, but you never know until you actually get out there on the grass with them. And, you know, after that game, I mean, they were, they were very, very impressive. They were very good on offense, but they were very good on defense. And so, uh, but yeah, we wanted to win that game really bad. You set really lofty goals in your introductory press conference. You said conference championships, yeah. New Year's Six, Final Four, yeah. the, the college football playoffs. Yeah. How do you attain that? How, why do you believe this program can accomplish that? Yeah, I fully believe that. I mean, they've already, like I said, the foundation's been set. They've won championships. Uh, they won New Year's six, six game against me. We had a really good team. I mean, we had a team that probably was a running back, healthy running back away from winning the whole thing, and they beat us pretty handily that day. 
So they have the foundation set in the way that we're fixing to recruit and uh, strategically too, you know, the way it's set up now, I mean, we're going to have to schedule a top 10 team, top 10 team, non-conference, and then you got to beat them. Then you got to run the table in your conference. And I really don't think they can keep you out of the final four. Now, I'll say this about our conference. Every year, it's getting better and better. I mean, you look at Cincinnati. I mean, they almost beat Georgia, probably should have. Uh, you look at Memphis, been a top 25 team. SMU's coming up. Temple a few years. I mean, you do, it's, it's the who's who. So I really feel like the, high, the profile of the conference is, is raising. That will help in the future, too. Seems like you want to get the Orlando and Central Florida community on the Gus bus, too. 100 percent. You know, I, I think uh, we'd like to give everybody ownership. I really feel like we're doing something special here and, and most people want to be a part. And so uh, we'd like to have everybody, you know, jump aboard and, and go, go on the ride with us. They're getting the best Gus Malzahn coach of any time in my career. What is the, the best Gus Malzahn? You mentioned that yeah. in your introductory press yeah. conference. You know, I think it's a guy that uh, has 15 years of high school experience, which I think is a great advantage. Uh, and then 15 years of college experience and been fortunate enough to coach great players and win championships before. And then I got a chance to sit back for eight weeks, which I've never done. It's been fast and furious for 30 years and kind of evaluate everything. And um, it really, you know, helped me with my perspective. Um, you know, I'm very, very excited. I'm energized. Um, you know, I look back at my career and the things that I'd like to change and then things I'd like to continue. And so. It's just, that's why I told Terry, you're getting the best Gus Miles on. So, you know, I'm real excited, probably as excited as I've been in a long time, and uh, just feel that everything's kind of come together. When you were working in high school as a teacher and a coach, I mean, did you envision yourself getting to the highest level of college football? No, I, I just, whatever job I had, I mean, I, I put everything in it. And, uh, you know, I was at three different high schools in the state of Arkansas. We were fortunate to win championships, I think, at every, every one. And, and, I'm a guy that's been blessed everywhere I've been. I've had big time players. I've had great administration and great coaches around me. And this situation is the same. Uh, but that high school background, I really feel like it gives me an advantage. From the standpoint, I'm used to building around our strengths. You know, a lot of college coaches, they have their system and it's a cookie cutter system, but we have our system, but we're also flexible enough to build around our best players, specifically our quarterback. And I'm really excited to work with uh, Dylan and the rest of our quarterbacks. What do you think about Dylan in the, in the meetings you've had with him? Yeah, of course, just watching the program from afar and watching Friday nights and Saturday with him playing, I mean, you know, he's a big time quarterback. And to win a championship and, and to win big games, you have to have a great quarterback. And, you know, I'm really excited to work with him. Off the field, what do you like? What do you like to do? Uh, I like to play a little golf. I don't have time now, but maybe in the summer. Uh, you know, I hear there's some great golf courses around. So uh, once we get to the summer and get through spring, you know, I'll, I'll hit the golf course from time to time. And the major influences in your life are who? Oh, wow. Uh, probably uh, high school coaches in the state of Arkansas that I looked up to. Uh, Barry Lenny Sr., you know, he's a Christian coach. He's real professional and to try to model my career after him as a young guy. Frank McClellan was right down the road. He was the winningest coach, I think, in America at one time, over 300 wins. And so really, that, that was the guys that really I looked up to and modeled myself after. Your core values are what? Well, I'm a, I'm a Christian coach. Uh, this is my ministry. And the Lord has put me in the right situation time and time again. I've been blessed to coach some of the best players to ever play the game, you know, college football, and Darren McFadden, and Felix Jones, and Cam Newton, and Trey Mason, so um, you know that's the way I look at it, and I just want to be an example. I want our coaches to be in a positive example for our players. You know what a great dad looks like, what a great husband looks like, and this is a lot bigger than football for me. I'm sure you've seen images and video of what the bounce house is like yeah. when things are really rocking. How much are you looking forward to that atmosphere, getting a taste of it when things kind of get back to normal and UCF's winning football games? You know, I had, had experience. So in 2007, I was office coordinator at Tulsa. We came here for the conference championship game. And I think it was the first year the Mounts House was going. And I just remember leaving like, whoa, and I couldn't, you know, it was kind of loud and all that. And uh, so now I hear it's even better. So I'm really looking forward to that first game. And your message to UCF fans is what? Buckle up. That's a great way to end it, Perfect. right? Perfect. Buckle up. My thanks to Gus Malzahn for his time. Ryan, your impressions from what we just heard from the head coach. I love the fact that this is a guy 
who had to earn everything. He mm -hmm. spent a long time as a high school coach. You can tell that is part of his foundation. And I love the fact, in addition to all the energy and enthusiasm he brings to the table, he's also engaged. He's been to UCF basketball games. He tweets about big UCF softball victories. Mm -hmm. So he's out there on social media. You can tell he's in this for the long haul. Yeah, I think UCF fans, UCF boosters, UCF Nation is going to love him. Like you, my takeaway from this was when he talked about uh, his high school coaching days and how he put all of himself in that one job. And it seems to me that's what he's been doing mm -hmm. in the weeks that he's been hired in mid-February. Instant credibility. We know what his track record is. Absolutely. He is a CEO yep. of a college football program and seems really energized and does have a chip on his shoulder. He is motivated <laughs> to get this program to the top of the it's American awesome to Conference see. and more, yeah. So spring practice for UCF kicks off on Monday.